Hi, my name is Richard and I am the lead instructor for Outdoor Training Specialist Original Outdoors. This is our review of the Country Innovation Woodlark Waterproof Smock. Some of it filmed in the rain. Late last year, I wrote and filmed a review for the Country Innovation Raptor waistcoat that they sent to me. And in that review, I said a couple of times just how what's, how surprised I was by various aspects of it, how well made it was and how useful I actually found it to be and how much I liked it, considering it's not really my usual kind of thing. I think Country Innovation themselves were a little bit surprised by some of the wording in that review as well. What was the word they used? But well, there must have been something in that review that they liked enough to send me something else. So they sent me this, which is the 2019 Woodlark Waterproof Smock. So this is an over-the-head waterproof smock with DWR treated cotton outer, an Innovation XL waterproof and breathable membrane liner. There are side zips, there's a chest pocket, there's more pockets here, there's a big hood. It's aimed really at that market that Country Innovation are really associated with, and for good reason, that bird watching outdoor photography and sort of people who stand in the great British outdoors in the great British weather looking through optics and standing still for long periods of time in all weathers without broadcasting their permission their position through bright colors and I can see it will do very well with that market normally with these reviews I say something along the lines of well let's take a look or you know these are the features or something like that and then run through the features and then say yes but what about this and what about that and then sum it up at the end with yeah I like it for this I'm not going to do any of that I'm just going to say that I really love this smock I've been wearing it almost every day almost certainly every working day in the outdoors for the last two months i've been using it in north wales and scotland in the lake district i've been using it in the mountains in the forest with clients of all types i have been lying on the ground in it and rolling around and brushing up against rocks and climbing and scrambling even a little bit of winter climbing in it it's great it uh, suits me very very well it suits the kind of things i do very very well so instead of just going through the features i'm going to use the rest of this review to show you why i love this smock and why if you do certain things in the outdoors you'll probably love it too so any waterproof that i'm gonna find a home for in my regular rotation of outdoor gear and in my gear store needs to do one thing. Well, okay, it needs to do two things. It needs to keep you dry and all of that, but it also needs to work with a rucksack. I am wearing a rucksack like this, something like this, about 40 to 50 liters with a waist strap, with shoulder straps and a chest strap for, I don't know, 80 to 90% of the things that I'm doing at work. I generally am seen wearing a rucksack. So any ruck top layer I have, which a waterproof is a top layer on the layering system, it needs to have the features on it, like pockets and zips and things, fit in this space, be above the waist strap, between the two shoulder straps and under the chest strap. Most of the things that you need to get to needs to be in this zone. And Country Innovation, well, they seem to have addressed that because the main side-to-side -side hand warmer pocket, the place that your hands naturally rest when you're standing around waiting for something to happen, sits just there above the rucksack strap. Absolutely perfect. There's this chest pocket, which has got a top zip like that with a waterproof zip. And that is where I keep the OS map and compass and phone and things that I need to get to regularly. That sits in the, between those two straps as well. So it works really well with a rucksack. It doesn't bind, there's plenty of free space. It doesn't ride up. It's got knife long tail thing at the bottom. It works well with a rucksack and for me that's that's a real bonus and I've got some very expensive waterproof jackets from big name brands that are terrible with a rucksack or at least on my shape. Don't know if Country Innovation were really thinking about the rucksack user when they went for the smock but it works really well for me and a, well done Country Innovation if you've if you designed it that way well if you didn't design it that way well done anyway. Something else I like is that you've got these adjustable cuffs down here on the arms. It's a fairly standard feature on waterproofs these days, but it's a nice and chunky tab and it's big enough to do with your teeth as well and to use with gloves on and things like that. And when flailing around with bits of cord because you're recording a review instead of paying attention to what you're doing. You've also got extra bits of material 
underneath in the armpits there, which means when you do reach up high, the sleeves don't ride down and it doesn't lift up the hem of the smock too much, which is good if you're working in the mountains and you're scrambling and leaning up for things. It also works quite well if you're bringing a camera or binoculars up to your face because it means it tucks in nicely and doesn't pull across your back too much. So it's, again, something I wasn't looking for, but I quite like. In the same kind of line, you've got this adjustable, the vent front zip thing. And unlike a lot of smocks, it's got this waterproof gusset of material that stops it gaping and stops opening too much. And I admit, I didn't think this was gonna work when I first tried it on. Cause I thought, well, that's no good. There's a vent and that's gonna stop everything venting. But what happens is that happens and it provides enough venting air out of there without letting too much wind or rain in. And I found with the hood up, it works really nicely. It's kind of an open, but waterproof and weatherproof zone for my face and everything else without feeling too constricted. Really good if you're working and walking uphill with a heavy bag or something like that. There are also these venti zips at the side that have a press stud at the bottom so you can keep them closed so it doesn't flap around too much. And they go almost all the way to the armpit there. That's kind of a two-handed thing to open them all the way up and down. But they provide more than enough venting. I'll talk about that later on. But they're well placed and you do have to take your rucksack waist belt off to get to them, but it's, that's kind of a thing with all smocks anyway. There's a couple of things that um, don't necessarily work that well with my body shape. I think it's head size and things like that. One is the hood itself. The hood's detachable, there are press studs all the way around the back so it'll come off, but I don't understand detachable hoods on waterproof gear because if it's waterproof, then you'll want a hood. And if you don't need a hood, then you don't need a waterproof. That's my thinking, but I know other people think differently and other opinions are available, so we've got that. With this, you've got these double flat storm flap thing so you can close it entirely over your head like that and you can do all of that and it's quite a good weather seal there are two simple elastic adjusters there for pulling the hood frame down there's a wired peak that runs from about there to there and there's a little volume adjuster tab on the back of the head so you can singe it all down what i find with that though is that it's when it's all pulled down and pulled down together it doesn't move that well with my head. So I've been doing some search skills training with some clients recently. And one of the things with that is visibility. I know you're not meant to be searching with your hood up anyway, but it kind of demonstrates the point where I turn my head to the left or the right and I'm just looking at hood. It doesn't move that well with my head. So I think that's to do with the shape of my massively oversized head and filling all of the space rather than a problem with the smock. But it's worth trying out if that sort of head movement with the hood is absolutely critical to you, then it's worth taking a close look at it. But it's got everything you'd expect to find on a modern waterproof. So is it waterproof? Well, yes, it is. Um, it's kind of a two layer thing going on. There's this outer cotton fabric, Braxton Aqua, I think they call it, which is treated with uh, a substance that then gives it a durable water repellent, so DWR. It gives it that thing that makes water light spray bead up on the surface and promotes breathability because the water doesn't soak into it straight away. However, in prolonged rain, like we have today, well, I think it's, it's going to start snowing soon. It will start to soak in. It will soak into the outer layer. But there is, underneath, there is a waterproof breathable lining. And you can find it all the way through. And you can see it on the inside of the hood there, which is the Innovation XL lining. Now that, I suspect I've actually used that in other waterproof jackets from other brands. And it works for me. It does work as a waterproof layer in that I don't get wet and it works as a breathable layer in that I don't immediately find myself in this weird microclimate of sweat the moment I put it on. So it is breathable and it is water repellent enough to be called waterproof. 
I've used it in, well, anyone who's experienced British mountain weather in the winter when it's not snowing knows just how wet it can get. And it's been absolutely fine for those cases. I've worn it with base layers underneath and mid layers underneath and no rain has got through other than maybe at this opening at the top here and if I leave the hood down like this. So it doesn't leak, it keeps me dry. But this outer layer will start to absorb water eventually if you wear it in prolonged rain. So that is something to consider. I haven't had the opportunity to wear it in big fat wet snow. I've worn it in cold dry snow where the snow just brushes off it, but not in big fat wet snowflakes that might stick to it. And if they do and they melt onto it and soak into it, then this outer layer, if it's sub-zero, will start to freeze. So if you're planning on using it in very, in Arctic conditions, if you're going to, so I don't know, the forests of Sweden and Scandinavia or uh, parts of Canada and Siberia and anywhere else where you've got the combination of very low temperatures with big fat wet snowflakes, it's something you might want to carefully consider. For the British conditions where generally speaking it's not below zero when we have big wet precipitation whether that's snow or sleet or rain or whatever then it's going to be absolutely fine but if you want to use it for arctic travel in those particular conditions then maybe consider something else as i say i've used this jacket heavily it's been shoved in and out of a rucksack and dragged out of vehicles and brushed over rocks and I'm sitting on the ground with it now and it's been in fairly heavy rain so for that initial factory finish DWR to be wearing off slightly isn't too surprising but it, that Innovation XL lining still does keep you dry you've just got to be aware that the outer layer might start to get saturated I know with Ventile cotton that's actually part of the design that's what you want to happen you want the outer layer to get wet and then completely swell up and make it completely waterproof so nothing else will come in uh, that works well in above zero above freezing conditions but yeah, you've just got to choose carefully for this. So it will keep me dry and I'll happily wear it. It's about two degrees centigrade today. It's raining and I've got gloves handy for my hands and things. So it's, it's that winter but not freezing conditions here at the moment. So I'm happy wearing it for that. If it was if I was planning to wear it for days where I would be getting wet and then going into sub-zero conditions, and I was going to be doing that for days on end, I might be a little bit more careful in how I use it. One sector of the outdoor market that I think is going to like this smock, or at least it, they should take a closer look at it, is that bushcraft, wilderness skills, survival-y type of end of the market. People who spend a lot of time sitting around campfires and around sparks and in damp woodlands where you will be wearing your outer layer on the top and you may come into contact with sparks and embers and things floating away like that. If it was a synthetic, a nylon, a polyester outer, then any spark that lands on the outer, the, you got a good risk of that developing into a small cigarette burn type hole very, very quickly. It's why I try to avoid wearing synthetic layers around campfires if I can or at least I don't wear my brand new shiny expensive ones however this being cotton won't do that cotton will burn eventually but you can take small bits and touch it to that and no holes no damage no problems I must stress in the smoke that country innovation make no claims about this being fire retardant flame retardant spark resistant that's just my own personal experimentation but i've got experience using cotton outers in other places cotton generally speaking isn't a great thing to wear for the outdoors because once it gets wet it stays wet for a long time but i've talked about the waterproofing and the compromises there so for wearing around campfires, I can personally recommend this, even if Country Innovation don't specifically say anything about it. That said, if your smock or your waterproof goes up in flames because you wore it too close to a fire or you tried to do that with it, then that's not my fault. You've been warned. There aren't many things I'd wish to change about the Woodlark smock. One is the hood. I'm never going to take it off. I'm always going to leave it fully attached. So if there was an option to buy it with the hood fully attached then I would do although I know Country Innovation have a Ventile smock which is a very similar cut which is a little bit more expensive but the hood on that is permanently attached. I 
might like a little clipping point inside one of these pockets to attach my compass to or something like that. But if I really care that much about it, then I could probably add that myself. I, it's not the lightest. It weighs, I think this is about 1300 grams when dry and obviously it's going to be more than that when it's wet this is the double xl um it, although if, if if i cared that much about the weight i wouldn't be going for this kind of smock i'd be going for something much thinner much lighter and have compromises elsewhere this is incredibly rugged it's very well built also with that cotton outer it's not going to scuff up it's not going to tear very easily i'd have to take a knife or a sharp piece of metal to it to cut into it i'm i've got some confidence that this is going to stay in one piece for many years to come as long as i keep treating the outer you know retreating it with waterproofing and other things mm. It comes in one colour, which is kind of a browny grey green. It's somewhere in between. Um, if you have a look in the photos, they give you more of an idea. And I think the photos on Country Innovation's own website give you the best colour representation. It does blend in well. Um, as you can see, I'm not really a fan of bright colours necessarily for a lot of things. And if you want to be discreet, if you want to blend into the background for whatever reason, then this is not a bad colour choice for most of the British landscape. It's so that's about all I can say. It's a tough, well, rugged, waterproof smock that doesn't allow too much heat to build up inside, is adjustable, works well in heavy rain, works well when work walking up a steep hill with a rucksack, works well when pushing through brash and through undergrowth and against rocks and even when scrambling and climbing. It has some limitations in what, which environments you can use it in, possibly into the temperatures you can use it in. But for most conditions, this is going to work well. It's not the lightest, but it's built to a specification. And it, I think it really hits that specification and does very well at that level. I can't say that much else about it. If you've got the opportunity to go in and try one on for yourself or have a look at one, I really urge you to. If you have a look at the rest of the country innovation range, everything else seems to be along the same vein. So if it's not a brand that you're familiar with, like I really wasn't until the end of last year, then go and have a look at their stuff and have a look at what they do. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do and you want to see more of it. If you're already a subscriber to the channel, well, thank you very much. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, Original Outdoors is a training business. We have a website with training courses and events and articles and blogs and all sorts of things on there. Please take a look at originaloutdoors.co.uk. We've got some other businesses linked out from that that deal with different sectors that you might want to have a look at. And however you've come across this video and however you found us, I'm glad that you did. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.